Hey everybody, I'm Dan Herring. Welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365 Today we've got an interesting video for you. It's going to be the five best soft plastic lures that you've never heard of. Keep it right here. This is one you're going to want to see. Okay, so we're going to talk about the five best soft plastic lures that you've never heard of, the five best soft plastic baits that you've never heard of, and uh, we have to qualify some of this, right? So we're going to qualify it by saying the bait has to have been around for at least five years, so it has to have been in the marketplace for five years or more, and these are the lures, these are the baits that I'm familiar with, that, I'm, that I feel that... Uh, are not as well known or that have been forgotten about by the industry because some of the baits that I'm going to be talking about today are very are quite old they've been around for quite a number of years and so we'll discuss that too that they were popular at one time but they've long been forgotten about and are hardly ever thought of today anymore and yet they are still great fish catchers after all that's what this is all about it's about effective soft plastic baits for catching fish so I've put these five baits in a hat. They're just on separate pieces of paper. I'm going to talk about them randomly. So we're going to start by just picking them out of a hat and then I'll discuss the bait, why I think it's one of the best baits that uh, nobody knows about or uses anymore and we'll go from there. So the first one is picking it out randomly here. Let's see what we've got. The Yamamoto Big Double Tail. So this is the Yamamoto Double Tail Grub, and I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, what the heck are you talking about, Then This is a, a lure that's very well known, and it is. The, the Double Tail today, I think you can still get this in a 4-inch size, and I believe maybe even a 5-inch size, but this was the big Yamamoto Double Tail uh, with a 6-inch full length. And so the thing that made this unique was how wide this tail is so if you take a look at this you can see it's got a really large tail profile and it used to be a very good bait to be used on the back of jigs why yamamoto discontinued it i'll never know but this thing is a great jig trailer one of the best ones out there to give you that nice profile that nice fall these things the tails work real well gives you that crawfish uh look to the to the bait and it just makes a, a very good uh, uh, trailer for a jig. You can cut the part of this off so that you can make the jig more compact, give it a more compact profile. Great bait here, no longer in production. The only way you'll get the big double tail is to find it on eBay. But if you have an interest in this, fear not, because Yamamoto has come out with something maybe even better. This is called the Yamamoto Cowboy. Look at that double tail profile, even wider, even bigger. This is gonna make more vibration. It's going to cause a lot of commotion in the water. I haven't used these yet, but I bought them last winter when I saw that they were out there and saw how big the tails are. Um, thinking that there's two ways to use this bait, right? It's got some other arm, arms on here, so you can just use it, Texas rig it the way it is. But I really think the value, the bigger value of this bait will be to, again to use it as a jig trailer. I'm looking very much forward to fishing that guy on the back of my jigs. All right, let's find out what the next one is. The next soft plastic lure that you've never heard of is a man's stingray grub. So this is another one that's been, that's a, a well-known lure for some people. Uh, the, those have been around, you know, the guys who have fished back in the late 70s and 80s might know something about this bait but it's largely forgotten about today. It's a stingray grub. And uh, this thing is a killer, especially for smallmouth bass. It catches largemouth too. It's made by man's. It comes in two different sizes. You got this little tiny one here and this bigger one. Both work very well. Uh, and there's really nothing quite like these on the market. Today, everybody likes to fish this, um, this poor boy's grub, right? A very similar looking tail, similar grub, but you can see the poor boy's grub is much softer. It bends much easier. And the thing that's kind of interesting about these stingray grubs is they're quite stiff, and yet they're very good fished two ways. The first way is on a jig head, a mushroom head jig or a ball head jig. The lighter the jig head you can get away with, the better. On a light jig head, it tends to have a circular fall, almost the way a tube falls. 
So it looks like a dying or injured bait fish, and then when you get it on the bottom, you just bounce it on the bottom. Small mouths go crazy over that approach. It's an excellent cold water bait, one of the best cold water baits that you can fish. I'm talking when the water's in the 40s all the way down in the mid 30s. This thing catches fish in cold water. So if you're fishing cold water, if I'm fishing cold water, I never leave, I never leave my house without having this in the boat. This always comes with me because it just catches a lot of fish in those environments. A good river lure too, it catches fish in the river very well. The second way to fish this man's stingray grub is on a drop shot. And it's, it's uh, funny, it's a little bit, uh, what would you say, counterintuitive. Uh, but uh, because it is stiff, right? A lot of the drop shot baits are soft like these poor boys. But there's something about the look on this thing uh, of this thing on a drop shot that just catches the fire out of fish. It might be how that tail, you see the how that tail shakes, it's because the plastic is very thin uh, and even though it's stiff, the lure is stiff, that tail has this really nice shaking motion to it. So if you're looking for a different uh, lure, a different bait to throw on the drop shot, maybe they're getting used to seeing what you throw try this try the stingray grub on the drop shot doesn't have to be cold water either it's good in the summer too but it will catch them on a drop shot all right let's find out number three the third soft plastic lure that you never heard of let's see what it is it's a huddleston weedless shad so here it is folks this thing is a secret of mine nobody <laughs> seems to know about these things uh they're known you know and the people who fish them uh, maybe like to keep them their secret, but uh, they come in a multiple multitude of colors. This is a Huddleston bait. They're the ones who are famously making the swim baits. The thing that's interesting about this is that it's weedless. It comes pre-rigged. It's got a weighted hook in there, and you can see here's the hook, and it's weed. It's rigged weedless. It's it just it's just right on top of the lure. So you might think, okay, this thing is going to be decent throwing in slop and weeds and, and uh, lily pads and that kind of stuff, and it is. It works very well. You can throw this in lily pad fields. It has a swimming motion. It's got a thumper type of tail on it, so you can throw it out and just kind of uh, work it through the pads, work it through milfoil beds. It catches a lot of fish that way, but there's a way that I like to use this that I don't see other people using it, and it's just to use it in open water. This thing is very good on suspended fish. When you throw it out there and let it sink, it sinks uh, in an attitude like this, and it has this uh, shimmy to it. So it shimmies as it goes down, and then you can just kind of jig it back up, and it'll shimmy back down. So I'll actually fish this thing vertical. I'll throw it out in open water and let it go through schools of bait fish or schools of, of uh, suspended fish, and oftentimes on points in the summer, you can catch some really nice bass doing that. Uh, it's an approach that, uh, it's a bait that most fish don't see because people aren't using this that way. They see that weedless hook and they throw it in weedless applications only. But that doesn't mean you can't throw this thing in open water. It looks just like a shad. Uh, the other place that this thing really kills them is if you like to skip docks, skip underneath docks. This is a fantastic skipping bait. It skips well, you can get it under the docks. You know, those, there's the docks, that one of the best skipping baits and, and baits that you can use on docks is a Senko, a Yamamoto, Yamamoto Senko. But if your lake is, has fish that are so used to seeing that Senko that maybe they're, uh, maybe they're not taking it so well or, or uh, eating it as much because uh, by this time in the summer, just about every fish has seen a Senko that's living under a dock. This is a good alternative to throw. You skip one of these under the dock and just let it go down and hold on because this thing does catch dock fish very well. An incredibly versatile lure. You can fish this a lot of different ways. The Huddleston Weedless Shad. All right, we got two lures left. Let's see what they are. Two baits left. Two soft plastic baits. Best ones that you never heard of. So here's another Huddleston. This is called the Huddleston Grass Minnow. And it's a lot like the Weedless Shad. It's, it's a weedless configuration. You can see the hook is right here. It's got, again, it's got a weight that's already inside the bait. And you can see that it's a weedless lure. Again, you can throw this in weeds. This particular lure has a different tail than the weedless shad. You can see the shad's got that more thumper tail. This one has got a much more subtler tail. They both wiggle when you, re when you retrieve the bait. This one I found to be fantastic in rivers and streams. It's a great smallmouth bass catcher. 
in uh, streams and rivers. They'll catch fish in lakes too. I've actually, even though this is weighted, I've actually put a Texas rig weight on the front of these and have pitched them in the weeds and just let them go down. And I've caught plenty of fish that way too. So you can, there's another way you can fish this bait because it's rigged weedless the way it is. But this thing is a great river and uh, small stream uh, bait for especially smallmouth bass. So uh, let's see what the last one is. One last bait. That's one of the best soft plastics that you never heard of. It's the Yum Woolly Hogtail. Now this bait has been well known. A lot of people that used to fish this bait like it. But again, this is one of those ones that's no longer in production and it is a killer. It's the Yum Woolly Hogtail. So this is the Yum Woolly Hogtail. You can see it's got these flappers on there. It's got these double long tails. So it gives a lot of action and there's a lot of ways you can fish this. One of the best ways is to just take it as it is and Texas rig it. It's got a flat side here and then it's got these ribs and so that uh, creates vibration and bubbles in the water. I like to rig it so that these ribs are the belly. So what I would do is I would have the hook point coming out the top and this would actually be the back. The flat would be the back and that's where the hook would come out and then I could Texas, Texas rig it there. Some people like to Texas rig it the opposite way, and I've done this too, and then you could actually bury the hook point into one of these ribs, and it just stays weedless that way, but yet it frees itself very well when a fish grabs it. Personally, I've just found that the bait seems to work better when the ribs are on the belly. When that's, uh, the, I just think it, uh, it gives a little bit more vibration as it's going down through the water. But this is an excellent lure that you can pitch into uh, weeds and, and that kind of thing. Uh, it, it lends itself quite well as a punch bait. You can use it for punching. And then finally, I like to use it a lot on the back of a jig. Ever since this bait was first came out, I was putting it on the back of a jig. And this will give you an indication for how much I like this lure. It still is one of my top uh, uh, baits for, for a jig trailer. I very rarely go fishing uh, on weedy lakes without having a jig with this tied on the back. Uh, and it's, it, you can use it through the weeds, but it also works very well uh, just on deep points, throwing a jig out in deep points. I I like to fish it on a football head, for example. I'll just cut this head off right here, just that you know quarter inch piece or three eighths of an inch piece off of it. And then I will thread it on a football head jig or just a, a, a pitching jig, either one is good. And, and you get a lot of action coming off this. A football, you just drag it on the bottom looks like a, an injured crayfish or whatever it, it has a lot of action as it's coming over stuff catches a lot of fish and then uh, on a pitching jig you just pitch it in the weeds pitch it in brush uh, fallen trees that kind of thing uh, a really good bait i really like this bait you can still get this uh, on uh, on ebay but it's out of production and uh, you might uh, guess that i've got a bunch of them already because uh, it's something that i don't ever want to run out of i want to be able to fish this for many years to come. Well, boy, we got through those five baits, it seemed in quite a hurry, but uh, those are my five best soft plastic baits that you've never heard of. Now, I know that some of you obviously have heard of them, but are you fishing them? If you're not, I implore you to give them a try because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised they will catch fish. Remember to keep it tuned here. If you like that video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, we love putting these types of informational videos. We're all about the art and science of fishing, especially bass fishing. We're certified bassified, as you well know. And so I'm kind of interested, if you would, comment uh, and what, tell me what your five best soft plastic lures that are no longer heard of or fished or hardly used today. Love to hear your input. I'm sure there's a bunch out there that you got. You might even remind me of some of the ones that I used to use that I like so much. I know there's a lot of plastic worms out there that are no longer in production, for example, like the man's, well, I think the man's jelly worm is still available, but there's quite a few others that uh, may not be available anymore that just still catch the fire out of the fish. So I'd love to hear yours. Please put them in the comments and we'll be putting out another video very soon. Hope to see you on the water and may God bless your fishing endeavors.